Hi guys, very good day to all of you. Today we're going to look into IGCC Geography 0460 Seminar 2021. Let's start it. Okay, first of all, let's have a look into the overview of all the paper. All candidates should take three paper, which are paper one, paper two, and paper four. In paper one, students are assessed on geographical themes and candidates should answer three questions and each worth about 25 marks. Candidate must answer one question from each section, which is overall section A, section B, and section C will have two questions each. Out of the six students have to choose three. The duration of the paper is one hour, 45 minutes, and paper one carries about 75 marks weighted to 100 marks, which is equal to 45 percentage of their overall paper. Paper two. In paper two, students are assessed on geographical skills and candidate must answer all the questions. Paper two normally will consist of five to six questions. And the duration is about one hour and 30 minutes. And paper two carries 60 marks weighted to 100 marks, which is equal to 27.5 percentage of the overall paper. The last paper would be paper four, which is the alternative to coursework. Candidate answer two compulsory questions, completing a series of written tasks. Each question carry 30 marks. The duration of the paper is one hour, 30 minutes, and paper four carries 60 marks, which is weighted to 100 marks and equal to 27.5. So 45 percentage plus another 27.5 and another 27.5 percentage will all together will be 100 percentage of the 0460 paper. Next, let's go into the answering techniques. Let's learn the techniques of answering the following selected questions from the papers. First, we look into the paper one, then we will go into paper two, then paper four. Paper one, here I've selected seven mark question, which is the essay question. Normally we call this as the C style question, which tests our case study knowledge. Student should be able to answer C style question worth seven marks in paper. And you will need a lot of case study material over the IGCC course. This is the only question which take the quality of your writing into account. And with this type of question, you need to be specific and make sure you know your fact for each case study. Example of the question. Here I have a question. Let's look into it. Describe and explain the climate of a name hot desert area you have studied. Okay, and name of a desert area. This is a type of question where you normally will see in paper one for each of the question and the last question, which carry seven marks. Okay, what to do next? First step, choose the name of the area that you studied before. Example, the Sahara. Step two, list down the important points that you're going to explain in your essay. Example, location, the characteristic of Sahara, climate, factor influencing the climate of Sahara, plants and animals in Sahara. Step three, start writing your essay. Now let's look how to write the essay properly. First paragraph, we should introduce the area. So the name of the desert area is the Sahara. So the first paragraph can be like this. The Sahara Desert is the largest hot desert on earth. 
it stretches across many countries in North Africa, including Egypt, Tunisia, Algeria, Morocco, covering an area almost the size of the United States of America. This would be our first paragraph. Now, let's look into our second paragraph, or we can say second point, the characteristic of Sahara. The Sahara Desert has one of the lowest population density on the planet. In the 3.5 million square miles of sands, mountains, and waterway live just 2.5 million people. Above one quarter is covered by sand desert known as Urks. Fossil evidence shows the desert used to be wetter thousand years ago. Human activity and climate change through the natural and human causes turn into a desert. Now, point three, the climate. The Sahara climate is very hot and dry. Although it is very hot during the day, it does become cold at night. The Sahara Desert has a radical climate. During the day, temperature reach about 38 degrees, and at night, they are freezes about negative 5 degrees approximately. At day, the temperature increases due to the loss of water, which is about 75% to 80%. The air rising at the equator and air sinking roughly 30 degree latitude, which is the main reason for this climate as the water from the desert is being evaporated and rising. Therefore, being transported up to the mountains or dunes surrounding the desert and then condensing, which is the rain shadow at the tropical forests, which are next to the desert, which the equator line is. Till now, we have explained three points until the climate. Now, let's look into point four. The climate is characterized by unusual high annual and diurnal temperature ranges, cool to cool winters and hot summer, and two precipitation maximums. The climate is characterized by a strong annual temperature cycle following the declination of the sun, mild, dry winters, and a hot dry season preceding variable summer rain. The precipitation in the Sahara Desert is scarce as the whole desert generally receives less than 100 millimeter, which is equal to 3.9 inches of rain per year, except on the northernmost and the southernmost as uh, well as in the highest desert mountain. Now let's look at the next point, which is plants and animals in Sahara. Saharan vegetation is generally sparse, with scattered concentration of grasses, shrubs, and drought-tolerant grasses, such as tamarisks, and acacia. The Sahara environment required that the wildlife adapt to the hyperarid condition, fierce wind, intense heat, and wide temperature swings. For a few examples, Barbary sheep, oryx, and sand fox. The okay, this will be the end of the essay. For you to get all these seven marks, you should explain about three to four points with relevant examples and explanation. Now, let's look into the next paper, which is paper two. Okay, this is the skill-based paper. You will need to bring the following equipment to your examination, which is you must compulsory to bring black pen, pencil with a sharpen and eraser, ruler, protector, a pair of compasses, calculator, and piece of string. And tip two, OS map scale are a must for this paper. You need to be familiar with the whole range of skills. For that part, I have a video to be watched here, so let's watch the video and learn a bit about the OS map skill. Okay, guys, let's watch the video now.
Yeah, guys, thanks for watching the video, and I hope the video gives you lots of information about the map skill, especially for grade and six grade reference. Okay, now let's continue with our paper two examination tips. Okay, okay, this is the example question. You always need to use the map extract. When you are answering the question, you need to use the map extract to answer the question, not only the outline map in the question paper. You should use the map extract, which will be printed in A3 size separately and given to you. And you should only use the figure to help you identify the correct area on the full color map extract, which will be printed and given to you. Do not use it to identify the feature, only to locate them on the full map. Okay, this is the example of the map extract question. Figure one shows some of the feature in the southeast part of the map extract. Study figure one and the map extract and answer the questions below. Okay, now let's look into one of the sample question of our uh, paper two, which is took from May, June, 2020, paper two. Figure 3.1, 3.2, and 3.3 insert, which will be given to you in a, a printed separately. That is what we call as the insert here. Show three coastline. A, identify each of the following landform. Landform W in figure 3.1, landform X in figure 3.2, landform Y in figure 3.2, and landform Z in figure 3.2. Now let's look into the picture. Okay, this is what we call as the insert. Figure 3.1 and 3.2 for question three. Okay, here you have to find the landform W, as you can see in this picture. Here you have landform X and landform Y. And this will be the last picture where you have to find the landform Z. Let me show it to you guys again. This is landform W, landform X and Y, and landform Z. Now let's check the answer. Landform W is wave cut platform, X is a beach, Y is a sand dune, and Z is a cliff. So these are the answer for this question, which is 3A1 is wave cut platform, 3A2 is beach, 3A3 is sand dune, and 3A4 is a cliff. Okay, guys, let's continue into our paper four. Paper four, which is 0460, Slash four will be our code, which is this paper is the alternative to coursework. And yeah, I have a sample question from October November 2019 paper. Geography students from Pantry in Southwest Ireland did a weather investigation and they wanted to see if there was a link between atmospheric pressure and rainfall and the link between wind direction and temperature. The student agreed to investigate the following hypothesis. Hypothesis one, rainfall increases when atmospheric pressure rises. Hypothesis two, temperature is affected by the direction from which the wind is blowing. Now let's look into the question. Describe and explain a good position to put a rain couch to make sure that the data collected will be accurate. This is one of the selected questions from the paper. Now let's look into the answer. It should be away from people or animal. D in the bracket here mean definition or description. So you have to explain the point why it should be away from people or animals. Okay, the explanation should be so that rain cloud is not interfered with. Second point, it should be away from tree or clear or buildings or away from shelter. 
and it should be on open ground. Explanation for this point, so that there is no interception of rainfall. So trees or buildings don't block the rain and to avoid drips from the leaves. Third description of point, it should be on grass uh, above ground level. Explanation for this point, so that rain doesn't splash into the funnel. Next point will be the accessible location where explanation for this point, so the measurement can be obtained. And the last point, it should be on flat or level ground. And the explanation for this point would be so it would fall over. This is how we should give the description and explanation. The mark for description and you will have uh, explanation will be two for each. Two marks for description and two marks for explanation, which you will get the four marks as you can see in this question here. Okay, guys, this is one of the example of paper for question. And now I'm going to explain further on paper four. As we know, paper four carries 60 marks. There are two questions. Candidate should answer all questions. And the duration will be one hour, 30 minutes. And the additional materials you should bring which should be calculator, protector, and ruler. Okay, this is the example question. I'm going to explain to you guys the whole question number one. Student who lived in Campania, a farming region of Italy, did the field work to investigate the land used on the local farm. Okay, so the description will be, the farmer gave the student a map of the farm which showed the main field of boundaries the students were then given permission to investigate and draw a map to show the different way that the field were being used. Their map is shown in figure 1.1 insert. Let's look into the map. Okay, guys, as you can see, these are the map here where you can see the key is W, which is wheat, O, L, Olives for R, oranges, S for sheep, P for potatoes, C for cattle, T for tomatoes, B for beans, O and for onions, and you have farmhouse and farm buildings, and then you have part and field work, and then location. Now let's look into the question related to the land use on the farm or figure 1.1 for question one. Use the map key to identify the land news in the field described below. It is a large field located 200 meters east of the farmhouse. So now we have to check where are our farmhouse. We have our farmhouse. Let me note it to you guys. So we have our farmhouse here. So east of the farmhouse would be this side. So we have V as the answer. Now, the second question, a field located 300 meter not not west of the farmhouse. The answer would be cattle. Now let's look into our next question. The student did not recognize some of the crops growing in the field, such as how they could solve this problem to complete their map. The answer would be they can take photograph, take sample of crop, sketch the picture, and they can look up in book or internet, or they can ask farmer, teacher, or expert. 
By using this, they could solve the problem to complete their map. Now let's look into the next question. From their map, the students estimated the area used for different types of farming. The results are shown in table 1.1, as you can see in this table here. The question would be, calculate the total area of the farm. So we have the total area of the farm here. So students have to plus all this, and you will get the answer, which is 57 hectares. Now let's look into our next question. The students plotted the area of each land use on the bar graph and the percentage of the total farm area in each land use on the pie graph. These are shown in figure 1.2 and 1.3 below. So these are the bar graph here. On the left and on the right, we have percentage of the total farm in each land use in pie chart or pie graph. Now let's look into the question based on these two figures. Give one advantage of each graph to show the data. Bar graph, it will show area, number, figure, units, amount, quantity, and how much land is used for. And it is easy to compare the land use area. Pi graph show the proportion or the percentage, and it is easy to compare the proportion or the percentage. Now we move on to the next question. The student decided to investigate two hypotheses. Hypothesis one, the land use changes as land gets higher and steeper. Hypothesis two, there is a positive relationship between the size of fields and the amount of labor needed for different land uses. To investigate hypothesis one, the student need to find out the height and steepness of slope in different fields. To do this, they follow two paths up the hillside from the road on which the farmhouse was located. When they came to the each different field, they did two fieldwork paths, which are described below. The path and fieldwork location are shown on figure 1.1. So here on the right side, you can see the figure 1.1. They recorded the height of the land using their cell or mobile phone. The application shown in figure 4, 1.4, which piece of information below would be student record. Tick your choice. The answer would be altitude. Now, we want to the next question. They measure the angle of slope along each path suggest what equipment they would use and how they would do this task. Now let's look into the answer. They can use a clinometer or protector to measure angle or read angle or read degrees. Pole clinometer next to top at a certain height on the marker pole at eye level and side other marker pole at top at with agreed height and string at same height and they can repeat along the path at each fieldwork location. Okay, guys, to know further on the usage of clinometer protector, let's watch a video here. Bring access road slope. The first thing you need to do is to hang a very bright colored flag at your eye height.
Then come on back up, Callie. And just stand in front of us and show it to us. And this is our protractor that's mounted on our VFF cruising stick. And as you can see, when Cali turns it, it shows different degrees on there. And we can convert those degrees to percent. Now what's going to happen is Cali's going to come up and focus on the flag down below, looking over the top of the cruising stick, directly down at the flag. Looking right down at the top of the cruising stick, she's looking at the flag, and then you can let that thing hang down. Once it settles, then you can turn to kind of rotate the cruising stick to the left, and then turn it over, bring it around, and see, raise it up a little bit. In this particular case, it is at about 14 degrees. Good grammar and spelling are. Okay, guys, I hope the video show you the information on how to use the protective genometer. Now we're going to watch a video explaining of the usage of slope, angle, and aspect. So we're going to mark both the stakes at the same height, and this represents the height to which we'll push them into the ground. Until this level lines up with the surface. And we're going to line up so that the top of this mark is level with our eye level. We'll take them out the ground and mark the second stake at the same height. We can mark using a pen, or put around a piece of paper which may be clearer to see. Want to place the poles at the top and the bottom of your slope to get a sufficient distance to get an idea of the slope, yet still be able to see your second marker clearly. So we'll pin our board to the cane at the central pivot point, which lines up with these two notches to give a good line of sight. We then hang a pendulum which can be any weighted object on a piece of string, onto this. And this essentially gives us a re reference point at zero based on gravity. We then line up our eye level between the two notches so that we're looking at the top of the mark on the far cane. We then simply read off along this piece of string. In this case, we have a slope angle of 10 degrees or approximately 18%. We can use the same principle using a smartphone with a levelling device. Simply make two marks in the middle of your phone and get a friend to read off the slope angle from the side. If you have a compass or a smartphone app with a compass, simply line up so that you're facing down your slope and read off the angle. Okay guys, I hope these two videos give you enough information about uh, how to uh, do the field works. And you have another video where you can watch it later if you have free time. Now let's continue with our question. Table 1.2 shows the result of their field work. The student made the conclusion that hypothesis one, the land use changes as land gets higher and steeper was true and use evidence from two uh, table 1.1 and figure 1.1 to support this decision so these are the part a part b and the figure 1.1 for this question based on this how to answer this question the height compare the range of the height example the width below 75 meter 
can say lowest land and the sheep above 123 meter high higher. When we write such as feet below 75 meters or ranges between 75 and 90 meters and sheep over 150 meters, you will get two marks. Or you compare the change in specific height along one part. Example, we at 57 meters and olives at 104 meters, you will get one mark. Or when you write wheat at 57 meters, olives at 104 meters and sheep at 153 meters, you will get two marks. Next about the steepness. Compare the range of the steepness. B below five degree, you can say flat, flatter or flatter slant and sheep above 18 degrees steep, steeper. If you write B below five degrees, oranges between four and eight degree and sheep over 18 degree, you will get two marks. Or Compare change in gradient along one part. Example, wheat at two degree and sheep at 25 degree, you'll get one mark. Or if you write wheat at two degree, olives at 16 degree and sheep at 25 degree, you will get two marks. We continue. Suggest two reasons why the land use changes as the lands get higher and steeper. Okay, the answer can be wetter, cooler, windier. Steeper gradient is too steep for machinery and sheep are agile, able to cope with steeper gradient. On a steeper gradient, there is increased rate of runoff, which remove nutrients, or you can say the soil is thinner. The crops or the wheat can only grow on flat land because, example, the soil are fertile and it should you can say a farmer decision or choice where to put the land use. For you to get these two marks, you can write any of two points of all these five points. To test hypothesis two, there is a positive relationship between the size of field and the amount of labor needed for different land uses. The students obtain some secondary data from the farmer. This is shown in table 1.3, as you can see here. The land use in the field, average field size, and the labor needed hours per acre per year. Sheep, 8.3, we need four labor. Wheat, 7.07 7 labor. Cattle, 6.2, we need six labor as it continues until potatoes, we need 16 labor. Now let's look into the question related to this table. Use the data in table 1.3, plot the average field size and labor needed for wheat and olives on figure 1.5 below. So label the two land uses. For this question, you should mark wheat at 7.0 hectares and seven hours and olives at 3.9 hectares and nine hours. Draw a best fit line onto figure 1.5. The line of best fit refers to a line through a scatter plot of data points that expresses the relationship between those points. Next, what is your conclusion about hypothesis two? There is a positive relationship between the size of field and the amount of labor needed for different land use. Support your conclusion with evidence from table 1.3 and figure 1.4. So this is a four mark question. How to answer this question? Hypothesis is false or incorrect, and it is a negative relationship between or correlation smaller, fields equal more labor, more hours, a larger field needs less labor or less power. And you will get one mark for example, such as potatoes grown in smallest field with high number of hours or high labor. Tomatoes grown in small field with highest number of hours or most labors. Sheep rare in largest field with lowest number of hours, least labor. And the credit pair data of land use and field size and labor statistics.
Potato field size 2.2 hectares and needs 16 hours. And labor and sheep field size, which is 8.3 hectares and need four hour labor. We want to the next part. Labor is a human input of farming. Give to other human economic or social input on a farm such as this. The answer should be machinery or tools such as netting, capital, money, grant, subsidies, fertilizers, pesticides, insecticides, or any predictors, seeds, buildings, or example, which can be greenhouse polyphenol, drainage, irrigation, terracing, advertising, marketing, selling, and etc. Next question. The steepness and height of the land are natural input which affect how the land is used. Give one uh, other natural input which affect land use. Okay, so you can write uh, as the rainfall, temperature, sunshine, or soil or nutrients, water or seal from river. For this question, you just have to write one of these points. Now let's look at the last question. To extend their investigation, the student wanted to find out the more about the processes which took place on the farm. Describe what that they could. So describe way that they could do this. Interview, talk to a farmer or worker, use a questionnaire survey, ask farmer about. about the farm, make more visits or visits in different seasons, stay on the farm for a few days and work experience, watch the farmer at work or observation of the farmers. Okay, guys. All this while I'll explain paper four. And uh, thank you so much for spending your time.